Yeah, I mean, it was uh, it was a part of my evening viewing with my mum and dad, I remember that. I'd sit on the floor, watch the TV, Star Trek would come on. Uh, the music, I would hear the music in my bedroom and run in. Um, I, yeah, I definitely, I wouldn't say I was, a, I was a Trekkie or a Trekker, but I would definitely say like I, I, I loved Star Trek. And then I think the films, right, especially the, the, the Abram, JJ's films, have just reinvented it in a way that just makes it so cool. And I, I love, what I loved about, not only my film, our, our film, but the other two, is that there's a sense of humor to it. And it knows what it is. And, and, and I think, you know, the cast is incredible. Chris Pine, Zoe, everyone, it's just like Zach, they're really, really good actors that bring a real life and vitality to, to these well-known characters. So. Um, yeah, I, I feel like I definitely can say Star Trek is one of my shows that influenced me as a kid uh, watching TV. Well, it's interesting, I was saying earlier that, you know, I think Star Trek was probably the one of the first diverse, to use a buzzword, diverse shows on TV. You know, this is a show where... You know, you had a Scot and, a, and, a, and a, a black man, a black woman, and you had, you know, you had all this sort of multicultural cast members in lead positions. It was great. Everyone could sort of relate to someone there. Um, but also, like you said, you know, the idea of the the Federation and the civilizations that populate the universe. You know, the Enterprise traveling to each one of them. My character is a new character to the Star Trek. Um, and you realize why eventually in the film, but you know, with him being a new character came a license to really challenge what the Federation was about. Justin and I spoke about that a lot, and we thought, oh my God, what are the Star Trek fans gonna think? Because this guy is absolutely walking in here and unpicking the fabric of what the show's about. Um, for me, that was a really interesting, it was a really interesting concept for me, you know? I think there's, not to be corny, but there's some parallels when you look at modern day society and, you know, there are people that do not want the world to be as diverse and cool as, as, as we all enjoy it, right? And I think Kral has that sort of mindset from the onset. When you see him, you go, this man, you know, it's, it's beyond evil. It's, this is, you know, someone that does not want to be a part of the group and doesn't feel like they just need to be a group. Um, and you know, it's a, it's a, there's, a, there's a deep, deeper storyline that sort of emerges. But Justin and I, you know, we found the concept fascinating. And Simon Pegg and I, you know, sort of worked, you know, worked hard on the dialogue and, and, and what, what he has to say and what he shouldn't say. You know, it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I think you know, um, and I, I, I definitely was nervous about how I, you know, number one, I had to follow the footsteps of. Benedict Cumberbatch, who I thought was incredible, an incredible storyline. But, you know, just to be a part of that legacy, you know, uh, you have to bring it. You know, you're the main villain in Star Trek, you better be scary, do you know what I mean? And I, and I definitely thought about that. I was slightly intimidated by what the fans might think. Um, and I'm hoping that they, they find my character engaging as I found him to play. I mean, I, I'd never made a film where I had, you know, full body, full head prosthetics, so this was a, a new area for me. I actually found it quite liberating because it was sort of like puppetry. You know, here I am with this massive head, I, I just sit there and be still and could eat, like, lots of energy come from my character. Um, we discussed that in the process of, you know, what he looked like, and, you know, and there were various stages of my character that happened as well, which is interesting as well. And, and I remember just, you know, talking to Justin about that, you know, and how do we, how do we, you know, play that so it feels authentic, feels real, feels uh, uh, menacing, um, and, you know, engaging and, and, and you know, the, the, I came to it where they had designed the character, but I sort of offered my my two cents to sort of make him, you know, sort of compatible to me and what I wanted to do with the voice and the movement. Um, it was a really enjoyable process. I mean, I'm claustrophobic, so this was like a, a bit of a tough one to wear every single day for 18 hours or whatnot. But, um, but like I said, I enjoyed the process. I enjoyed the actual puppetry of it all.
Yeah, I mean, it, it's 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 the reason I got. You know, Robert De Niro was a big influence in my early early career, and I remember looking at him saying that like, you can't recognise him from one role to the other, and that sort of you know, that's changed. You know, some some actors tend to play versions of themselves and or versions of the same character in different films. And, uh, you know, I, I made a choice very early on that I don't ever want to repeat. I want to try and do something very different every single time. Obviously, that's, you know, a blessing if you can do that because it's not always the case. But I've been very lucky to be able to sort of have, in both film and TV, a varied sort of palette of characters. It's, also, it's important because I want to take the audience on a challenging journey. I want them to look me in an interview and go, oh, that's not him. That's not him. I mean, I, I, I find that I, I met actors that I've gone, wow, I did not think you were like that. And that to me is your job, you know, your job well done. I think everything needs to be laughed at. Do you get what I'm saying? To make it soft, to understand and accept. Uh, I, when I've heard jokes about child molestation of someone, and it was hilarious. I know that sounds crazy, but it's, it helps. It, it, 